Casual Birder Podcast, a weekly podcast for people interested in the birds they find around them. I'm Susie Buttress. This week, I went for a morning bird walk on Watership Down in Hampshire and was delighted to see one of the rarer birds of the British countryside, a yellowhammer. I had been thinking of conducting a bird walk at Watership Down for some time. The area was brought to fame in the book by Richard Adams about a group of rabbits who are forced to find a new home after their warren is destroyed. The morning I chose was bright and dry and seemed fairly calm, which was important because I knew from a previous visit that it can be quite windy and exposed up there. I didn't know what we'd see, but was fairly confident there would be red kites, wood pigeons and maybe common buzzards. I certainly didn't expect to see a yellow hammer. A quick note, any outside recording brings its challenges and when there's too much walking and not enough talking, or when I got distracted looking through my binoculars rather than describing what I was seeing, I faded the sound in and out. I forgot to put a mic on my husband, John, so my apologies if he seems quiet at times. Also, there was a blooper of sorts when I started recording the bird walk. If you want to hear this, listen past the end credits of the show. We've come out to White Hill Viewpoint, which is near Newbury, and it's very close to Watership Down and I can currently see two rabbits bounding around on the hillside. So there are rabbits watership down. Um, it's really wonderful here for red kites and, um, and we've seen some other birds as well. Already seen a great spotted woodpecker. Just heard a pheasant as I said that. He might call again. We've seen a buzzard, possibly. Um, I think we've seen yellowhammer just hearing a carrion crow. We're going to continue the walk and see what else we might see. It's a beautiful view across the valley though. There's also some farm machinery around so you might hear some engine noise. And we're also walking alongside a gallops which is used for racehorse uh, training. But I don't suppose there'll be any out. Uh, So we think we just saw some linnets, reddish on the front, fork tail speckly brown body, quite pale underneath on the underbelly. Just heard a buzzard calling then. So I've just seen a blackbird eating some berries in one of the trees. You were watching the red kite? Yeah, there were a pair of red kite further down the valley there one point where I think they flew a bit too close to a wood pigeon and uh, he was a bit startled and took off. I thought, hoped they were going to come this way but I think they've gone in the opposite direction. Oh, well I don't think we're uh, short of red kites around here so hopefully we'll get a closer look. Got those uh, unusual snails here, the white ones with the very flat and mm. whirly shell. I think I crushed one just now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe a blackbird will find it and have a free meal. I um, when I walked through the gate just up there, there was a, a, a big conifer tree with a, a branch that was bouncing as though something had just taken off. Oh, from I did it. see a large bird fly across, but it was just below the horizon, so yeah. I couldn't see. No, it turned out it was a crow. I saw it. Uh, turned around as it, as it came back and, and there was what, another one still in the tree ah, right. um, hunched up and um, but that eventually took off as well and as that took off I saw the branch it was on bouncing as it, oh, as it left right. so I was hoping it might have been uh, something a bit bigger you know, by a bird of prey but not there's a couple of birds just quite far off but they're in the top of a conifer tree I was just trying to see if they were linnets as well they might be chaffinches it's just a bit too far off 
Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I think they're chaffinches. I think. I think I just saw one with white wing bars. Uh, yeah, I have a, a short walk alongside the uh, gallops. Um, unlikely to be any little birds nearby, but we might have um, some overflying wood pigeons. <laughs> we might see the pheasant that we heard earlier. And if there are any more yellow hammers or um, linnets, maybe, because it's farm fields, it's open. I have to stop for a coffee in a moment. Sounds good to me. So this is part of the, the thing about being out for a bird walk. You're never, sh never sure what you're going to see. And that's part of the fun. So if we can confirm that was a yellow hammer earlier, that is tremendous because I just haven't seen them for so many years. That's not to say they're not there, it's just I've not been to a location where they've had them. So for me, that was a personal thrill. But then you can go quite long periods on a walk and not see anything, either not see anything that you don't see at home or not see anything at all. It just depends on the conditions. But it is a really lovely morning this morning. It's uh, only mildly breezy and um, the views across the valley are just stunning. I'll tell you what we might see when we get back here. What's that? A cup of coffee and a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> peanut butter and jam? Oh, excellent. So we've not had any breakfast yet. We've brought a little picnic out with us to eat. Um. Oh, oh, gosh. There's a sparrow hawk. Did you get it? I don't think so. So... I've just landed in that tree, conifer there. I wondered if he actually got it. So there was, um, that was a bit bizarre actually, because the sparrowhawk was already on the ground. Was it? Oh, did you see it fly in? No, yeah, I thought it flew in. Oh, right. Across, so, so that little flock of birds, which might be linnets, are flying around the tree that the sparrowhawk is in now. But a sp um, uh, one of the birds flew into the, into the ground, into the field. And I was just trying to look at it to see if I could see if it was a linnet. And uh, suddenly, from nowhere, the sparrowhawk went for it. Um, I thought the sparrowhawk was already on the ground. Um, so I don't know if the sparrowhawk actually got that linnet or that bird. But John said he saw the sparrowhawk fly in. So it must have just been, well, it must have just been looking across, sort of flying low across the field. I mean, it did land in the tree as though it had caught something. Um, yeah, but that was a bit bizarre for the... Um, for the smaller bird to fly in as though it was, which made me wonder if it had caught something and it had flown in to try to mm. see if it could do anything. Yeah, but now it's gone right into the heart of that tree and we can't see it. Oh, uh, well, the fact that it's gone right into the heart of the tree, I wonder if that means it did have something. Mm. In fact, not to be gruesome, but if it did, we may well see some feathers fly out because yeah. sparrowhawks do pluck their prey. Gosh, see? That's the sort of thing that can suddenly be spotted just uh, just as you're walking through. And I only... So how did you spot the sparrowhawk? Um, well, I was uh, w watching, actually, what I thought were um, a, a group of linnets. And I was just about to put my binoculars up to look at them. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw uh, a, a much larger, darker bird fly in very quickly, um, heading for the linnets. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously flying in, in exactly the way the sparrowhawks do. And I, I, it all happened so quickly, I'm still not sure if, uh, if the sparrowhawk actually got one of the linnets. I suspect, uh, I suspect it probably did, but I didn't hear any um, squeals like you often do when, no. um, when small birds are captured by birds of prey. Yeah, so what I saw was, um, I'd also seen the flock of birds, but I saw one flying low into the field. So I thought, right, great, I'll get a chance to get my binoculars. And it landed in the field and I was just getting my binoculars onto it when from the side um, the sparrowhawk just appeared and I, so I, I didn't see it fly in because from my point of view it looked like the sparrowhawk was already on the ground and the, unfortunately this linnet had decided to land in the field just by it um, and then it, the, the sparrowhawk took off straight away but I couldn't see if it caught the linnet that I was watching 
or if it already had a linnet. Um, it flew, the sparrowhawk flew off into a conifer and then all the linnets flew around all um, chattering and, and squeaking but they've now flown off so they've you know lost interest in what was happening not seen any feathers coming falling out of that tree no maybe maybe he didn't no maybe, maybe he didn't maybe he missed it and he's just uh, recouping to, to rest and hide his embarrassment <laughs> so we're going to be stopping here now anyway to have um coffee and sandwich so we'll keep an eye out and see see what happens um while we've been standing here i've definitely seen some chaffinches um heard a buzzard call we think we saw a we think we saw a buzzard flying but we couldn't actually be sure it was flying very much more like a buzzard than a red kite but it was quite a long way off and then we got distracted by a wasp and our sandwiches so <laughs> we didn't see what it was what else have we seen while we've been here oh, we've not seen any more of the sparrowhawk but but there is a crow nearby clearly <clears throat> i wonder if the crow is aware of the sparrowhawk in the tree yeah Also, I think the buzzard is. Oh, we've got the. Oh, that looks like a red kite, doesn't it? Oh no, that is a buzzard. Yeah, so that's what we can hear calling. Oh, there's two. Oh, are there? This one coming towards us here. Look. This one is a red kite, I think, though. No, oh, that one soaring there is a buzzard. I think and it's one. quite a pale. I think there's one of each. <laughs> oh, right. This buzzard is very pale underneath. I think it's the bird um, we saw earlier. Look, that's the red kite that I saw oh, right. going the other way. Hold on, I'm just watching the, the buzzard because I've lost him now. Sorry. Let me just uh, move along. So we were unsure about what bird it was we saw earlier that had been mobbed by the crow. So now I've lost the buzzard and I was hoping to see that it had, it seemed to me that it had a very pale underside. But now I can hear some more birds kind of alarming. And a swallow just flew through. So it's nice to see that there's swallows still around. I thought they would have left by now. I'm just going to walk down here a second because there's obviously a lot of alarming going on. Couldn't see what it was that was making all the birds twitter so much, but I wondered if it was the sparrowhawk again. Okay, so continuing the the bird watch let's just recap on what we've uh, what we've seen and what we might see on our way back to the car park so definitely lots of chaffinches around red kites buzzard great spotted woodpecker i think we saw a yellow hammer i think we've seen linnets we'd like to get better views of those mm. sparrow hawk uh carrion crow did i just hear a magpie then i didn't hear it Hmm. Uh, that, yeah, hearing a magpie, uh, wood pigeon, we saw some racing pigeons fly over as well, um, yeah, it's definitely a magpie cackling away in the background there, there's lots of twittery sounds, but it's quite hard to see what's making them, and I'm not as good with farm field birds. Uh, oh, early on there might have been a white throat. There was um, a small, pale, very pale bird that uh, was just giving out short um, tink tink noises. Not tink tink like chaffinch, but sort of like you hear in hedgerows occasionally. Um, but I didn't really see it properly. Oh, I can hear definitely goldfinch here. Yeah, they just landed in the tree just there. It's interesting you say that because when I got my binos on one earlier I thought I saw um, flashes of yellow in the wing and it uh, reminded me of a young goldfinch. So. And I did say that I could hear a young goldfinch calling out because you know they have right. that incessant mm. feed me, feed me. Right. Yeah, goldfinch is one of the ones that I'm very familiar with the song and the sounds of because they uh, are in the garden a lot, luckily. So 
So on the walk back to the car park, what I'll be hoping to see is, if I'm lucky, another yellow hammer. And what would be even better is if it, there's one in a tree calling or one on a fence calling, because their call is um, famously a little bit of bread and no cheese. So, um, oh look, blackbird. Oh yeah, there was blackbirds eating the um, berries earlier as well. So I'm just going to walk back round this way, see if I can see where the, um, if there's anything in that sparrowhawk, sorry, if that sparrowhawk is still in the tree. We didn't see it fly off, but they are pretty silent birds and uh, could just have gone out a different direction. Oh yes, we had the pheasant that we heard as well. So we've only been out an hour or so, so it's been pretty good for birds. We did consider getting out earlier, but sometimes sleep is better than being out. Oh, that's a shame. I just scared a house sparrow out of the out of the brambles, which I didn't mean to do. I'm glad I saw some rabbits though. It was uh, good to see rabbits since we're so close to Watership Down. So standing here now and looking out over the valley, there's some engine noise from a, tr uh, a plane going over and there's some road noise. But bird-wise I can hear a magpie in the background. I can see a large crow that's just arrived in a tree from the top of the conifer. I was wondering whether that magpie, because it's calling so much, whether it, it's the buzzard that's landed somewhere nearby. And that up in the tree there is a crow. But oh, right. Yeah, I know. It, they look big though, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is around here, but the crows around here look very big. As I mentioned about the buzzard, John spotted a large bird in the top of a tree and was just getting ready to have a look. You are allowed to have a look. It's, no, yeah. no, you've ruined it for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like when someone tells you the end of a movie. Look, bud, yellow hammer. Okay, there's a yellow hammer just right here. And I bet it will fly before I can get a photograph. Oh, fantastic. Really close. So they're beautiful birds. A uh, finch type bird. Whoop. Oh, it's flown even closer, but down into the ground, so I can't. I was going to describe him. Hold on. So there's a a type of sweet called a banana toffee, which has swirls of yellow and caramel uh, swirled together, and um, and that's always what yellow hammers make me think of, as they've got yellow and yellow and brown striped heads. So stocky beak, quite a lovely yellow, quite a lovely yellow face. Um, so there you go, when I thought I'd disturbed a house sparrow earlier, it wasn't the house sparrow at all, it was the, it was the yellow hammer. Fantastic, I think oh, that's, that's the best, best view of a yellow hammer I've ever had. Yeah, you, you hardly ever see them standing still or, or staying still long enough. They usually on you usually spot them just as they're on a wire overhead and just as you get your binoculars on them they've gone. And you hear that their numbers are really declining these days, so that's fantastic yeah, to, to see, see that. one. So that has been a wonderful um, a wonderful highlight of today apart from seeing all the birds of prey, was to, to see the yellow hammer. Um, so yeah, it's a, um, a bird of farmland. Uh, very sparrow-like on the wings and tail. Um, but where, where it differs greatly is it's a, got a yellow wash to its underside and the head has quite strong yellow uh, colouring. Uh, streaked with um, mid-brown colour. 
So from the back, you might think it's a sparrow, um, but sideways or frontways on, and you can see straight away it's not. Uh, the yellow is so unusual, and it's definitely a lemon yellow, not a green finchy kind of yellow. It looked particularly nice in the uh, in the sunlight as well. Yeah, hopefully I got a, a good enough photograph that I can post that in the Facebook group, and you can see see what that looked like. But yeah, it would be lovely if it called because uh, they've got a very distinctive call or song. Actually, it's the song that's distinctive. Look, there's a oh, just saw a wren uh, go off into the tree as well. Yeah. Oh, that's a small plane. Yeah. Seem to be taking a long time to get anywhere though. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, is that the yellow hammer back? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So if that uh, plane could hurry up and move just in case it starts calling. Oh, it's got a, a grasshopper in its beak. I didn't know they're grasshoppers. There you go, that's something we found out. Yeah, but I guess, you know, nice meaty grasshopper. It's uh, obscured by a branch, but it's possible that it's got a nest nearby. Because seed-eating birds often take insects when they've got young. So stay where you are, bud. Don't go any closer, because it may be that it's got a nest in that area. We don't want to freak this it out. This is where we saw the one earlier, isn't it? Yeah. It's out on the tree a bit more. Yeah, I think it must have a nest nearby, so we certainly don't want to upset it. Yeah, so let me describe it for you then. So, um, a small sparrow-sized bird, beautifully uh, lemon neck, a lemon wash under its underbelly, along its chest it has a uh, Sort of sprinkles of uh, brown, uh, the head and face, so mainly yellow with a brown eye stripe, brown stripe coming from the lower part of its beak and then joining up around the back of the neck and brown, two brown stripes across the crown. So the overall effect is that it's a yellow head but with some three brown stripes going across it on either side. It's just going down into the brambles again now. So it was this bird that I, I scared out of the bramble earlier. Um, small finch-like beak. Yeah, I think we're going to have to step back. We're clearly disturbing it. We're not that close. We're probably about, what, 30 feet from it? So we've just moved a few more feet further back so that it can be less bothered by the fact we're so close. Um, so looking at the back, it's got a brown striped or brown streaked, light brown and dark brown streaked wings. It's got a russety red or a yeah cinnamony sort of red uh, top of the tail, so just underneath the wings. And I suspect when it flies, that colour is along its back as well. And hello, we're just bird watching. It's a small dog wanting to know what we're up to. Um, it has got quite a long tail. Um, I was trying to work out if it was forked at all. I don't think it's forked, but the, the feathers are rounded at the end. So looking at the side on, the face has what looks like three brown stripes over yellow. It has a little kind of crest area, but I think that's just like a lot of finches, like chaffinches do as well, have a little crest that they can raise. I'm trying to work out what colour beak it's got because it's still carrying this um, grasshopper. But yeah, as John noticed, it's got very pale legs, sort of, fle sort of pinky coloured legs. It's going down into the brambles now. And the head, the crown area, looks like it's flicked with brown as well. So it's not a pure colour of yellow. It looks like there's little speckles of brown within it. It's definitely lifting its crown as it's working out whether it's safe to go to its nest. So underneath its chin is the much deeper yellow 
and then the rest of the body is much more of a sort of yellow wash or a lemon wash. Well, that was a very successful bird walk. We saw lots of birds, but the fact that we saw one that we see so rarely and for a really long period was, uh, was really great. During the bird walk, I described the yellowhammer as a finch type bird, but it is, in fact, a bunting. For further information on the birds featured in this podcast, visit the RSPB online bird identifier at www rspb.org.uk or the bird guide at www.audubon.org Listeners are continuing to tell me what they're seeing during their 10 minute bird watches. Jo from Essex told me she saw house sparrows and wood pigeons during her bird watch. She said that she also gets goldfinches in her garden usually, but none during the bird watch. And she often sees blackbirds, but hasn't seen any for a while. Thanks for sharing your bird watch with us, Mum. Jessica Ann, who lives near Wellington in New Zealand, sent me a sound file of a chewy bird in her yard. Jessica Ann says, I tried to do a bird watch today. I watch the chewies in the tree by my deck. Try to get a photo too, but they like to stay pretty hidden in the trees. This bird has amazing calls. Do look up some videos of it on YouTube. I also spotted some house sparrows, possible black-headed gulls or terns, and uh, Jessica's cat in the recording. I'd love to know what birds you've seen this week. Join our Facebook group to discuss this week's episode or post your photos of the birds you've seen. I really do enjoy hearing your tales, so come and join the conversation there. Find us at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash casual birder podcast. Follow me on Twitter at casual birder pod or on Instagram at casual birder podcast. And you can email me at casualbirderpod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. And tell your friends on Facebook and Twitter about the show. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. And check out their website at www.dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. Is that a buzzard over there being mobbed by a crow? Look, there it is. See it? Yeah, but they have very pale ones, don't they? Because, um, like in France. All right, we'll have a look. It sound it's calling like one. Okay, so we're out at White Hill Down. There's a great spotted woodpecker at the top of um, a dead tree just across there. Can you see that spiky tree just there? Right. So oh yeah. Oh, is that just flew? No, still there. Yeah, so we're at White Hill Down, which is near Newbury, and it's uh, very close White to. Hill viewpoint. <laughs> we're at we're at White Hill Viewpoint, which is close to Newbury. Is it close to Newbury? Not far from Newbury. Okay. <laughs> Closer to Kingsclear. Yeah, but no people are going to know. That. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're at White, White Hill. White Hill. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> There's a kite behind us, a couple of them. We're at White Hill Viewpoint uh, near Newbury. Uh, it's very close to Watership Down and it's a beautiful morning so we've come out for a short bird walk. Oh, is that a yellow hammer? It did look a bit like it. Yeah, it's really yellow. Well, it looks like this has been a very good morning for, I'm pretty sure that was, it was really yellow at the front and uh, brown behind. Uh, already we've seen several red kites We've seen a crow mobbing what I thought was a very pale buzzard, but John's with me and he thinks it possibly could have been another sort of bird of prey, maybe even a barn owl. It did land in a tree nearby, but uh, it's hidden at the moment. We've just seen a great spotted woodpecker at the top of a dead tree, and it's currently being... Uh, attacked a little bit by chaffinches, surprisingly. Um, just seen a yellow hammer, I'm pretty sure that's what it was, and that's a bird that I've seen very rarely in my life. This is just beautiful, it's big open country. It was lovely and calm a moment ago, and now a wind has picked up, so that's ideal. Uh, the ideal bit was uh, sarcastic. <laughs> 